Hey, Composey Gloves here, and today we're going to be doing our first exercise with major seven chords. We're going to get used to these things. So we're going to be, I'm jumping straight to exercises because that's the best way to really learn what they sound like. When we talk about their functions, it's really done more in the context of a key, but it's almost useless to talk about them if you don't understand what these chords feel like, if that makes any sense. So for example, the major seven chord has this way of taming a major chord and also just making it sound way less cheesy. A lot of people think major chords sound cheesy. It's really just the context they're in. So these are sort of judgment calls. But if I play like a C major chord, and then if I were to play like a line on it or something like, or, or just a rhythm, I mean to say. So it sounds rather, you know, stereotypical cheesy type sound. Maybe you think it sounds like something else. Maybe you think it's perfectly fine. But if we add the major seven, all of a sudden it's like, oh, like that's, it sounds a lot, it doesn't sound as bright anymore. This is, let me go to a different major chord. Cause once you've heard the seven, it's sort of hard to unhear it. So it's like, it's like, oh, that's very bright as a quality. Most people will use that word to describe it. And so if we had this major seven, it's now it should be noted. This is the leading tone. So it wants to go up. And if we were to talk about the functions, one of the basic functions of a major seven chord is it allows you because it's, if it's used as a one, meaning if you use it and if we're working in the key of D and this is the one chord and we decide to make it a major seven chord, we have the ability to have that resolution there if we sh should desire, but also will allow us to jump to any other chord in the key pretty easily. So let's talk about all the various chord symbols and let's do one. Uh, there, there will be answers. There are some nasty chords in here. There's like the D sharp major seven chord. It's a horribly mean chord, but I give it to you because you may see crap like this sometimes on a test. Generally in music, you're not going to see stuff like this. People will prefer to think of it as an E flat major seven chord. Uh, and it'll be, you won't be working in the key of D sharp, but these are done for exercises just so we know that you know the system, you know how things are supposed to work out. So when you have to derive answers, you can do it. But if you get stuck on a particularly hard or challenging one, there is an answer key included in the description, of course, with all the other work, workbook things. So, okay, what we're going to do is that's first let's do one. And then there's a variety of ways you could write the chord symbol for this, but I've only really seen a couple really used but there's all sorts of ways to do this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a G, a G major chord first, right? First, we're gonna make a major chord. And then we're gonna listen to it. We're just gonna get its sound into our head. And this is really important when you're doing these exercises because it'll make it so that when you're composing, you actually have reasons to grab things. You're like, oh, I want this quality introduced. So we listen. And uh, if you press play and then hit back while you're playing, it'll re-trigger. You have to wait till it crosses the bar line, but we listen to it. We get that major sound in our head. We're like, okay, that's what a major chord sounds like. And then we add the major seven. So we say, okay, in the key of G, the major seven is an F sharp. And now we listen to it. And then remember what that major sounded like, the major chord, and then go back. And then you listen to it. You just, I mean, you're listening hard, okay? I mean, you really want to just discover everything about that sound that is that sound while you're listening. That's really the goal. It's sort of hard to put in words, but it allows you to make emotional decisions when you're choosing to do things because you'll make lots of decisions for technical reasons while you're working in music for a class or something. But when you're being creative, you're going to want to know what your emotional options are. And so this, the, what it does to a major chord is pretty interesting. So, okay. We've built our seven chord. Now we need to label it. Uh, and I'm gonna go in to make sure my chord symbol thing is correct and hit apply. Done that in several videos now, so I shouldn't have to explain it. Okay, so we're gonna hit control K. There are like a ton of ways you could write this. So we could write it as a G major seven. You could even write out major, but no one does that. So if you write it like that, you will, that's, that's fine. That's probably the most clear way. If you're writing it out by hand, uh, this is one of the methods. There's a second method that works quite well too by hand. But if you write major, there's no confusing it if if you wrote like a capital. So you could write um, you could write capital M. And this could be confusing though if you're writing by hand, if that if your M is capital versus a minor. Maybe yours are really clear, but it could be a nightmare for some teachers. So it's it's best to just be super clear and write major. 
Um, mayor, major. Okay, so that's one way. We could write as well, you could do this. You could write G with a plus sign next to it and a seven. Because you could have an, that could mean an augmented chord. So we put a seven, we're like, oh, it's a G major seven chord. And that would look like this. And typically the seven and the plus are like small. They're like in the corner, like this, like they're slightly smaller. And then, so this way is okay too. This one's less common. I don't see it as much, but you may see it like more. This just means a raised seventh, right? Because if we have just G7, that means that it's a dominant seven chord. We talked about that a little bit in the other video, in the intro video. So, okay. And then there's one other way. And if you hit shift six, which types in the caret symbol, also the power two symbol for you programmers uh, in, some, in some languages. And so if we do that, we get this triangle. This triangle means major seven. So just that's just what it means. So I use the triangle a lot. Now in my answer key, I just flip back and forth from, I just throw all sorts of ways of saying it. This so that you know that all these things mean major seven. There's another one I'm less familiar with. I believe it's like a circle with a, a seven with a circle around it, something like that. I'm not totally solid on that one, but there's like, there's other ways of doing it, but I hardly ever see them. These are the ways I see or have seen. So that's the way that jives. So we, if, for example, I would typically, I like this one, it's compact. It means major seven, easy peasy. Maybe your teacher doesn't want you doing this stuff. Um, so you could write major seven. Some of these things are like associated with particular styles of music too. So these are always safe bets. And if you're working on a computer, you can safely use this because your computer will do it the same way every time. So it's really clear. Uh, you don't have to write out mage. But, you know, whatever. You'll see me probably use this just because I like how nice and compact it is. Uh, but on a test, I'd be writing Mage 7. I just want to be as crystal clear as possible. Um, there was something else I wanted to mention about this, but I can't recall it at the moment. But that's the exercise. So you go through, you do it. And, oh yeah, I remember. When you're writing music, you got to pick one. Don't be switching back and forth. Don't write major seven. The musicians will get mad at you. It's, it's inconsistent, um, so don't do that. But that's that. So go ahead, make these chords, and uh, we will be doing some more stuff. Get used to the sound. The big thing is you really want to get that sound. Like Just know what it can do for you. Uh, don't rush through it. Just take your time. Get the sound in your head. Subscribe and have... A blessed day.